Two one miles to the north of Stone 51, two F sixteen to Crescent Drive and Shore Road two five. Controlling a plane you can't see since I don't know anything other than it. Uh, it kind of is something you just get used to. AROPCOM stands for Radar Approach Control. It consists of a approach control, a departure control, and an arrival control. Basically what that means is the tower is going to hand us off a departure. The departure is going to work that outbound um, to the next approach control or center. And the approach control is going to, whenever that aircraft is returning to us, is going to work that aircraft inbound back into Holloman. And as they continue to descend lower and lower, they'll hand off to the arrival control. The arrival control will work that aircraft into Holloman Tower. White Sands Rapcon works with the tower by sequencing and uh, setting the tower up without sending everybody all to one point. So we sequence to the tower. Um, we inbound the aircraft when they have 15 to 20 miles to fly. And at that point, uh, once they get about 10 miles from Holloman Tower, they'll be handed off to the tower control. In a comparison to White Sands Radar Facility to the tower's responsibility of airspace, from the center of Holloman, about 4.6 miles, if you can imagine a ring right here, that'll be tower's airspace. And that's from surface to uh, 6,600. Holloman approaches, just the approach control alone, uh, controls all of this airspace, surface to flight level 220. And whenever the F-16s depart, we also control all of this west side down here and all of the east side and even the overlying of home approaches airspace. In, in a comparison, there's a lot less airspace for the tower to work with. We do control a lot more airspace than them. They're controlling the same amount of aircraft in a 4.6 mile bubble as we are working in thousands of square miles. Keeping a bigger picture of all the aircraft that are in the air basically comes with time. When you come here as a three level, um, you basically have no idea what is actually going on. And it just, as soon as you progress through training, it starts making more and more sense. You always just have to think of who's next. You create a sequence, one, two, three, and four, and then make it happen. And it, it's really just something that comes with time. My favorite part of the job is actually being able to do the job. A primary focus of air traffic control is always training somebody else to be able to do the job. So when you actually get in there, into a position and actually get to work it yourself, it's probably the best part. It gets extremely frustrating whenever somebody's making the same exact mistakes over and over again. So you learn to have the patience whenever you're training the people to become air traffic controllers. But it can get very frustrating whenever they make the same mistakes every single day. That's just part of the training though. I would say that's probably the most frustrating part, but it's very rewarding whenever they finally do get something right and become certified in position. M124 radar contact to miles and poles. After I leave the Air Force, I will be going on to the FAA to pursue air traffic in the civilian world and basically move on from there and see where that goes. I would love to continue to do it. I love the job. Radar vectors, 15,000. Pistol 3-1. VFR yonder. Tat 1805.